What's up boys, welcome back to a new Is It Imba or Do I Suck? And today we'll be looking at Peacekeeper, who is a Master 1 slash Grandmaster player. He'll be playing against Rook McIntyre, who I do know. He's a bit of a streamer and he's a Grandmaster on the American server. Now, let's actually have a look at the email of Peacekeeper, of course, um, as we always should. Um, 22 minutes of a PVZ. It's ridiculous how good Hydra, Lurker, Viper can trade versus literally everything, even Skytals. Seriously, 10 range on Lurkers. You can't feed back the Vipers if your HD instantly dies to Lurkers. Master 1 GM. Fantastic. All right, so let's get into it then. Um, this is probably the highest level game we have done so far on Is It Imba or Do I Suck? Yes, uh, there's some actual Grandmasters involved. You know, my sound is on. The graphics are all tuned up. I think we're ready to uh, to help uh, solve this mystery. Is Hydra Lurker Viper actually completely broken, or does Peacekeeper just suck a little bit? Now I do have to note that I believe Mechantech is about 150 MMR higher, but that might of course be because his race is simply better. It might have nothing to do with actual imbalance. Um, <clears throat> the openings look very standard. I mean, these guys know exactly what they're doing, so we're not going to focus too much on that. Just see some standard pylons going down, some adepts being chrono boosted and all that. Mechantech is leaving his overlord over here, checking what the first unit is. Might go in if he sees no chrono boost on the second unit. No, probably should have, but he doesn't. And we see Peacekeeper with uh, a double adept, most likely into a Phoenix follower. Now let's take a quick look at the adept movement to attack the hatchery for a bit so ideally you want to scout the layer um, with one shade that's exactly what he does and then maybe go for the drones the next shade so you can see um, if he's actually building drones or links or something like that now something that's a bit old is that he played double adapt into oracle it means that you don't have anything to deny the overlord um, he will of course go phoenix after but this is just a slight variation honestly nothing big here um, double gas is going down. He's playing a good game so far, honestly. Very tight build order. Um, hitting his chrono boost, hitting his timings. Let's see what his oracle will do. I don't like his flying movement very much. Um, usually you just poke into one base, not into both. Took some real damage for that. Now he will be going here. We'll manage to get two workers. Yeah, mech attack doesn't respond. And the oracle gets away. So this is uh, pretty good damage for the first, uh, first uh, oracle. Now we have a Forge Twilight follow-up. Does he start with an Observer, I assume? Observer, third base. Oh, this is kind of nasty. Yeah, this is why you always keep your Oracle with your first step. It's really important. So, this is kind of the first mistake. This should have been way smoother. So, ideally with this kind of opener, usually you get your base at around 420. If you get Forge and Twilight before, perhaps 430. So this base is already extremely late. Now, as a response to him losing his first rope, he threw down four gateways, but he immediately got scouted by an overlord. So I doubt this will do very much, honestly. We're also not seeing any immortal production, which is kind of unsafe against any early kind of roach bust. Um, now we do see an immortal now, but it's a, it's a little late. Sentries are late, so our info is going to be delayed because we don't have uh, any hallucination scout. But honestly, he's playing a fine game so far, you know? Um, <coughs> adapts. Ah, this is dicey, but he managed to get back into a good position. And together with the Oracle, this actually turned out pretty alright. So I think he's actually in a pretty fine spot. Now, a couple of points is that he hasn't really been producing workers at all. Instead of producing workers, he's built four sentries. I believe he went up to eight gates already, which is very early eight gate. But it simply means he has no workers. Now, his opponent kind of realizes that and starts producing roaches as a response to this, most likely. I think McIntyre could have drawn up a bit harder, but... <coughs> I mean, this is looking a lot like a push to me as well. Like, this is just an 8 gate. It's going to hit most likely with plus 1 and charge. And try to do some damage. Now, I'm not a massive fan of this. Of course, this is very aggressive. Um, and if scouted well, the Zerg usually gets out ahead. I think the Zerg is doing a good job scouting and reacting to everything. Now, what I don't understand is that we're seeing a second robotics facility. Where are you? Over here. And a cannon. 
and a phoenix. Because th this is kind of, this makes no sense. Like he's been preparing for a big attack. He's built what six sentries. That's a lot of gas. Usually you only get two. With this kind of army, you need to attack. If you're not attacking with sentries and you cut probes for like two minutes, like that's really bad. His gases compared to a regular build order are almost a minute late. That's really, really late. That's like 200 gas you, you just threw down the drain. This base should have been fully saturated if he wasn't going for an 8 gate. He cut so many workers to throw down these gateways and I was going into storm and plus two. It's adding another robo. So he should have been light years ahead in, in, in eco count, but instead he decided to go for, like these six sentries are completely useless at this point, right? Like sentries are really, really bad. They're good to have two or three of them, but not more than that in PvZ. Because either Ravagers destroy them, Lurkers destroy them, um, your our own Archons destroy them. Losing that Oracle is extremely painful as well. You always want to be able to know where your opponent is. Now on top of that, if we take a look at what Peacekeeper knows, is he, he knows some stuff. He's aware of the tech. Um, he's aware of how many base there are. He sees these two gases, so he knows it's going to be eight gas. The, the problem I have is that he has no map vision whatsoever. So if we take a look here, we see, well, basically no vision except where his army is. So it, that's an issue. Like, this is good. This is exactly what he needed to do a bit earlier as well. Send out a prism. These are all good moves, honestly. Colossus is not a good move. Colossus are awful if you build them. Um... Yeah, it's, might as well just quit. Like, it's no use, honestly. Use, useless unit. <clears throat> you want to be getting Immortal, Charge, Archon, Storm. Colossus don't really contribute anything to any army that Immortals don't. Like, the, Storm beats everything that Colossus do. And Immortals are just better than Colossus. Like, they're just better. It's easier to transition out of. Colossus are really expensive. They really delay any kind of follow-up tech. <coughs> So yeah, I'm definitely not a fan of this. It's a good run by though, but his army composition so far is pretty garbage. Um, on top of that, we haven't really been on the map yet. Like we have an army that's supposed to be on the map with many force fields. Maybe try to deny some creep. Um, we don't even have an observer right now. Um, once again, because we're lacking vision everywhere. Actually, we have pretty good vision. Then we were just completely, this guy was, Peacekeeper was completely out of position here and let these roaches cancel this now. Losing these roaches obviously isn't the best, but Zerg has a decent enough eco um, that he can afford to lose roaches at this point. Like roaches are not a unit you want to have in your army anyway as a Zerg. A roach is kind of like a Colossus. It looks nice on paper, but in theory it's complete garbage. Um, now we want to be doing harassment with this prison. We want to be transitioning into Skytals and we definitely don't want to keep producing Colossus as we're going up to four Colossus. Like the Colossus dies against every, it's such a bad unit. Like don't build it against Zerg. It's fine against Terran. Even against Toss it has some uses, but against Zerg, it's just not good. It's a garbage unit, please don't build it. Um, the Zerg's getting his Vipers out. Zerg doesn't have a lot of map vision either, that's okay. Protoss is not completely aware of where his opponent's army is. There's still an Oracle with his army, which is nice. And now we're gonna get a push, all right? now. Whenever you push as a Protoss, what you want to do is you want to set up harassment as well. So we see these two adapts, we should see a run by here, and the prism should be flying into the main. Because it's very difficult for Zerg to defend multiple areas, especially with a prism. Like, the prism is only two supply and can keep a lot of supply at bay. Like, you'll need to put supply everywhere to deal with it, and you need to run around, and if you get one warping in with the prism, bam! Just like that, whole game can end. Now. Is there any storms available? Yeah, we have uh, four or five storms. We have a bunch of Archons. We have the six sentries that, don't forget, haven't done anything at all this game. It's a lot of gas in there. And um, where's our Immortals? We have four Immortals in here as well. And we're attacking in one angle. Now, this is the absolute specialty of the Lurker, is defending one spot. They're great at keeping chokes. Um, they're great in a stationary position. As long as nothing else is happening on the map, the, like this is what the lurker is built for right it's like defending a single position like it's absolutely great so as long as the toss keeps moving around his army as one massive ball that is basically the dream scenario here for the zerg so even this if the zerg is out of position that's completely fine because 
as long as the Toss has one big army, he can just F2 his complete army to this spot, burrow and be fine. Now, the, the problem comes here when you're trying to poke in from one angle without anything else happening, is that the Vipers can perhaps start abducting one or two units into the Lurkers, and that's when it becomes dangerous. Now, we have a good setup here for the Zerg. Proto should really be... A should be looking to saturate this fort base. 12 minute in game, no saturation, no cannons. And should definitely be transitioning into air. There we go. That's a good transition. But this fort base should be fully saturated already. Fifth base should have started. Maybe here's a better fifth base. Like natural mined out, main mined out. Third base is eh, still some minerals left, but also getting close. So you want two extra bases already at the 12 minute mark, of course. Like he's he's not mining up. Like it's cool that you're doing a push, but this is it looks funny because he's maxed and has a 2k bank. But this is pretty all in actually. Like he needs to do very well in this fight because he only has 500 gas. He doesn't have any extra gas income. Like he needs to do a lot of damage. His opponent is getting way more income, has bigger worker supply as well. And once again, Artos is attacking in a single location. And even if he manages to kill this base, that's completely fine. Because Zerg still has a fourth base. Like, the Toss is thinking, well, I'm not playing him so hard. You know, I'm killing Hydras, doing damage, and almost killed a, a, a fifth base. But, mate, your fourth base isn't even mining yet. Like, you have 16 workers mining four patches. Like, you're not, you're not doing that well at all, buddy. You're not doing that well at all. Now, finally, we have some multitasking going on. Or, well, a setup, at least, for, for a run-by towards this base. As... <coughs> The pros decides it's time to. <coughs> oh my god! It just walks it in, I guess. Never mind. Now here's at least a prism, but yeah, I mean, lurkers are there. Should be able to deal with that. This is the problem. So, I thought what he was gonna do is he just wanna leave these salads here, and I'll walk with the main army to this area, and that leaves a challenge for the zerg. Right? He needs to split armies. What if he doesn't leave enough lurkers? What if he doesn't send enough lurkers? Like, he could lose. Now instead, what the Protoss does is he sends in 12 zealots, loses them all to lurkers. Then after he loses all of those, he sends in the prism, loses those, kills like three drones. Like, oh, I did some nice harassment there. And his main army is defending his main ramp, even though he's completely aware the full army is here. He should be pushing forward here, at least clearing this creep. Clear maybe some spines. Send three zealots over here while you're attacking this base. Like, there's so many things you can do. This Protoss just isn't using them. Now, finally the fourth base, fourth base gets down, but at this point, yeah. Look, third is running dry. We need a fifth up already at this point. Um, here we go with the prism. Will we see more multitask? Nope, no multitask. A single prism flies into a spore as the main army is guarding this area for whatever reason. Like, prisms are not easy to deal with for Zerg. And this guy isn't using the time. Look at this. He's just standing, guarding the ramp. Boom, be -dum, be -dum. Oh, moving back and forth. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, this is great. Save at home. Like, these guys are made for war. Like, this is like building an army. And then not using it. I mean, why are you building the army, mate? This is StarCraft. We're not the world peacekeepers here, bro. Like... No mutually assured destruction in Starcraft. Like we just attack when we have an army on a destroyer opponent. And we have a some some more runbys. Like in his mind, the Protoss is doing so many things. He's like, oh, doing runbys all game long. I'm using my prism, but technically, he's never actually or almost never doing multi prong. He's almost always attacking with one thing. And whether that is a prism with three zealots or his main army, it's still only one thing that's happening. Like. This is the first time he's actually putting some pressure onto his opponent while a run by is happening. And even though this didn't look great, he did take out three spines, killed a couple of roaches, and he set himself up for a later run by, which honestly at this point I doubt will ever come. Now, we see these Colossus. Let's see if the investment paid off, eh? Colossus with two kills, one with 11 kills, probably links. These Colossus did absolutely nothing, boys. Well, the most useless unit in the game. Congratulations, I'm happy you built them. Lose an oracle straight into his opponent. Decides to once again fly with his walk with his entire army towards his opponent. Loses two carriers into Lurker Hydra. Oh, this is probably what he thought was very imbalanced. Damn it. The Lurkers managed to kill my Hydras or my carriers. Now the Zerg is like, you know what? I think I've waited long enough. Let's just sacrifice half of my army into yours. Nice. Now the pros are like, this guy is fuming and you know, it's like, oh man, this guy sucks so much, can't even control his army. I'm doing run-bys all game long and I just lost two carriers earlier for free. 
I did all the feedbacks as well, and you know, I'm putting a lot of effort into this game. Nah, buddy, you're down like 7k, 4k. Like, you're gonna need some absolutely wonderful fights, and I mean, he's getting them. Like, he's getting some really good fights at this point because his opponent doesn't have the supply right now. But he's, I mean, the pros is still behind. Like, he's just been doing nothing all game. He's getting out mined for like the past 10 minutes. Like, obviously, he's gonna be in a garbage position. So, he's finally taking his 6 base. Still on 65 workers, by the way. Not the 74 that you actually need. Continues adding more Stargates. Goes up to 8 Stargates. Even though he's on 65 workers and has 70 gas in the bank. He's not even mining from his 5th base. Instead, starts mining from his 6th base. <coughs> starts building 2 Colossus again. As these have been working out so great. And yeah, the Zerg is like, well, this basically looks pretty exposed. Not a single cannon there. And Dos is like, oh my god, I'm outplaying him so much. Meanwhile, this base has been going, you know, nothing's been happening to this base. Not a single run by. No prism in the main in the past eight minutes. Dos is, is, is pretty blind as to what's happening in general. Has a single observer in the middle of the map. Army could come from here at this point. Dos would have absolutely no idea. Army could come from here at this point. Dos would have no idea. Like, there's so many things that could be happening right now, and Toss just isn't aware of them. So you have a little weird... Look at this. Zerg, the Corruptor Squad. This is mad. Yeah, Zerg's playing pretty well, honestly. I mean, it shows in the bank. Like, he's, he's doing well. So I wonder what these guys are gonna do. Now that Toss is, uh, like, basically F2-ing back home to deal with six Corruptors. Recalls a part of his army. Like, if there's one guy that's getting out play there, it's definitely the Protoss who... Just ran back home to deal with a Corruptor squad. Now, if the Zerg was slightly quicker, he could have killed this base in the process. But he realized a little bit too late. So, a little bit of the, you know, paying attention to one thing syndrome as well. Even at Grandmaster level, this happens a lot where they'll think they're multitasking, but actually they're just doing one thing at the same time. And he does get in a good position and probably would be able to abduct one or two of these carriers. Yep, there we go. And I mean, the Zerg doesn't even need to trade properly. Like... The Protoss thought that Zerg was trading very efficiently, um, but it's actually not the case. Like, the, the unit's loss tap is extremely even. The problem is just that the Toss isn't mining anything. Like, he's practically been on four base. Like, even though he has had six bases at some point, he's been mining from four for 20 minutes. And the Zerg's work account isn't that high anymore, and he's actually been losing fights a little bit as well. Uh, like, this army is extremely cost-effective. The, the problem is just that he isn't mining at all, our Protoss player. And he's not really doing any harassment either, so... Yikes. <clears throat> As we continue on... We have our Zerg player, who is uh, also running out of bank. And we have our... Protoss player who's who's starting to run dry as well, but he's feeling at our Protoss player. You, you you can see it, you know, it's like, oh, this went well the last few fights, he killed some units. Here he goes with the salad run by into Brute Lords. There's a lot of carriers here. It's like, alright, this is it, boys. How many Corruptors can there really be? Well, there's 20 Corruptors, you have 10 carriers. In theory, this sounds pretty alright, but it, in actuality, if there's no Void Rays or Archons, you're just going to lose a lot of your carriers because Corruptors trade really well against pure carrier. And this is why you always need to get either some Void Rays or some Archons with your army. And this trade was pretty cost efficient for the Zerg. And a cost efficient trade for the Zerg, who still had a 2k, 2k bank, against the Protoss, who didn't have a bank, is always going to be good, of course. So there's another Remax coming with 12 Corruptors. There's still Brute Lords alive. These Corruptors will just be able to target down the carriers. And... I'm, I'm honestly expecting a, an angry message from the Protoss at any point now. Like, wh what is gonna happen here, you know? Like, the mining isn't enough from the Protoss, his, his army isn't good enough, and once these 12 Corruptors pop, I do believe all the carriers will go down. There's still Vipers, like, this, this Zerg's been micro pretty well, honestly. This guy's pretty cool. He does kill one of his own extractors. And then he's like, you know what? I think I've waited long enough. Just gonna go in, snipe your carriers. Not sure how great of a move that is, but once the new corruptors join, oh, I'm looking for it. Oh, an actual GG by Peacekeeper. Well, Peacekeeper, you didn't multitask once. <coughs> you were basically on four base in a 21-minute game. Your four started mining at the 15-minute mark. 
Your army control is pretty decent, I'll give you that. But you built Colossus, so your army sucked. There was no Archon, like army composition wasn't great. The multitasking was non-existent. Um, what else was there? Yeah, and the mining. Just not sufficient mining. You just got outmined all game. I'd love to tell you that Hydra Lurker Viper is broken, but I think the reality of the case here, my friend, is that you suck. That will be it, boys. Please subscribe to me, leave a like, and comment down below. See you boys next time. Bye-bye.